At Stress to Strength and the Stress Management Institute, we focus ourselves on developing and delivering stress management solutions that are based on solid research and sound scientific principles. SMI's Stress Management Facilitator and Practitioner Trainings and Qualifications and our Workplace Stress Management Services have been built upon a foundation of academic research spanning many decades. Our stress management models are a reflection of the principles we have applied in our personal services and delivered through our sister organisation, Stress to Strength. In the building of the curriculum for our Stress Management Facilitator and Practitioner Qualifications, as well as in the design of our Workplace Stress Management Services, we began with the basic models of the mechanisms of stress. We hear a lot about the physiological impacts of stress and its effect on our mental, emotional and physical well-being. But what causes us to experience stress? And why is it that different people can be subjected to identical stimuli and some individuals experience no stress at all, while other people can display debilitating effects from the same event. So, this model of the mechanisms of stress, titled the Stress to Strength Process, is at the heart of how SMI and STS view stress and is central to how we can help you as an individual, as a practitioner assisting others, or as an organisation dealing with workplace stress. This model also gives an insight into how we intervene to help you manage stress more effectively. The potential to experience stress starts with a stressor, or the cumulative effect of many stressors. Stresses are the events, incidents, encounters, situations, transactions or interactions that have a potentially negative influence on our lives. When faced with a new stressor, or when we simply recall or think about it, or even a past stressor, we process that event or situation in two stages, which we term the primary appraisal and the secondary appraisal. For most people, in most instances, these appraisals occur spontaneously, immediately and without conscious thought. It is the same process that in extreme cases triggers our fight or flight responses. In the primary appraisal, we subconsciously determine if this event or situation is a threat to us. What we consider as a threat will be different for different people, but we would rapidly determine if there was a threat to our health, our well-being, or even to our lives, or a threat to our security, to the achievement of a goal or outcome we had set for ourselves, to someone we care for, or our wealth or possessions. It may threaten our livelihood or our reputation. If at the primary appraisal point we decide it's not a threat, we move on, not experiencing any real concern or angst as a consequence of what we have just experienced. However, if we sense that what has just occurred does present a threat, we then reappraise the situation and determine if we have the wherewithal to deal with it. Simply put, if it is a threat, we then complete the secondary appraisal and conclude if we can cope with it or not. If we can, we do what we have to. Feeling okay about it because we know that we can deal with it or mitigate its effects. But if we conclude that we are unable to address what has happened or will happen, this is where that ball in the stomach begins to form and be felt. A small event or incident leads to lesser feelings of stress, as does a few and infrequent events. But unfortunately, just the opposite is also true. When a Stress to Strength practitioner works with you to help you manage stress, one of the key interventions we practice with you is to give you clarity to these appraisal points and to give you tools and strategies for you to take control of them which in turn gives you control of the feelings and the stress you consequently experience. When an SMI practitioner works with your organisation, we go back another step in the process and we analyse and diagnose the sources of stress and we target interventions designed to reduce the stressors your employees experience. Having clarity and control of these appraisal points goes part of the way to explaining why different people experience the same situation with varying levels of stress, but it isn't the entire picture. What's missing are our biopsychosocial factors. 
These are the things that make each of us who we are. They are our background, our history, our upbringing, our cultural norms, our education, our economic position, our support network, all bundled up to influence how we appraise situations and what resources we have available to us to cope with adverse situations. This is a critical consideration in how SDS and SMI deliver their services and help people deal with stress, because it tells us that stress is a very personal thing. Because of these biopsychosocial factors, we realise that there can never be a one-size-fits-all solution to managing stress. Only processes and a range of tools and strategies that can be chosen from. For instance, we would never walk into an organisation and say we know why they have a workplace stress problem that we have just the solution for. What we can say at SMI though, is that we have a process that will unveil those answers and lead us to the primary interventions that will reduce their workplace stressors or the secondary interventions to help people better appraise their situation and cope with it more effectively. We invite you to explore both stresstostrength.com and stressmanagementinstitute.org to discover further opportunities in how we can support and serve your organisation.